So partners in truth, let's talk about the what, the when, the where, and the how, okay? So what, what does this look like? And, and, and what are you gonna be doing on a, a daily basis? And these are some very specific guidelines. Right? And so as you hear this, if you're currently in a truth partnership, um, you might say, oh, mm, we don't do that, or I hadn't thought about that, or that makes sense, or yeah, that would actually help us out. Right? And for those of you that are beginning a truth partnership, this is where you want to begin. Uh, and you will find that some of this uh, is similar uh, to what happens in the four T's process. First, agree to a set time, um, uh, agree to pray together daily for a set period of time. Right. Don't make it indefinite. So um, the encouragement based on this book is 90 days. Right. So agree to pray together for 90 days. When the 90 days are over, check in. Do you want to continue this? Yes. <laughs> Do you want to um, move on? Um, you know, it, no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter um, what you choose. But I think it's a very good idea to commit to uh, a, a set of time so that it's not just an indefinite thing and then you get six months into it and you're like, yeah, I was really kind of tired of this or it's just not working for me, but you feel like, oh, well, I committed so I have to keep doing it, right? Agree to pray together daily for a set period of time. Don't make it an indefinite, but stick to the agreed amount of time um, and then renew or resume if you'd like. My encouragement and the book's encouragement is to start with 90 days. Y'all know I love 90-day processes. Okay. Pray each morning. Begin your day with prayer. This is a specific guideline. Pray each morning. Begin the day with prayer, right? I'm not saying that prayer isn't beneficial in the afternoon. I'm not saying that prayer isn't beneficial at night. But what I am saying, and as we talked about, what are the benefits of a truth partnership? It puts God first in your day. In the same way, what is the benefit of brushing your teeth, right? First thing in the morning, what is the benefit of eating breakfast, right? We understand that there's certain things that we need to start our day with. What's the benefit of checking the weather um, in the morning, right? Before you get dressed, before you go outdoors, right? Because it gives you information, it prepares you for the day. In the same way, here, prayer is important. Put God first in your day. Pray each morning, begin your day with prayer. Here are some other guidelines. Pray no matter what, whether it rains or shines. Pray whether you feel like praying or not. Pray whether you're sick or well. Now, if you're in the hospital and you, you, know, you don't have access to your phone, there's, you can't speak, right? Let, we'll be, let's be reasonable here, right? But sometimes I know our minds go to the extreme and most times in your life, you're not at, in, in the extreme. Yes, sometimes we don't feel well. You know, if you really can't talk, you really don't feel well. Maybe you're you're in physical pain, and it's it's just not. You know, you you just there's no way for you to pray. All good, right? Maybe you can still just call in and listen. Just saying, pray whether you're at home, on a business trip, or vacation. Right? This reminds me of something that um, Py says often. If I won the lottery today. I would wake up the next morning and still do my spiritual practice, right? This is so incredibly important. Pray whether you're at home, on a business trip, or vacation. And finally, pray whether it's a busy day or a slow day. Now, all of these things are, are, are interrelated, right? Pray no matter what, whether it rains or shines. Pray whether you feel like it or not. Pray whether you're sick or well. Pray whether you're at home on a business trip or vacation. Pray whether it's a business day or a busy day or a slow day. Right, and that may seem harsh. You're like, wow, PG, y'all, y'all cold, y'all hardcore. Well, here's the thing, right? The way habits work, if you think about it, no shame, no blame, but you probably check Facebook whether it's a busy day or a slow day, right? Right, I mean, you probably scroll through social media whether you're sick or well, right? <laughs> no shame or blame, but there's an understanding that like, wait, okay, I actually can do this because there are things that I habitually do even when I don't feel well. There are things I habitually do um, whether I feel like it or not. Actually, the, the habits around social media, we don't even take the time to think, do I feel like um, you know, scrolling through Facebook or scrolling through Instagram? We're kind of doing it before we're thinking about it. So we can, we can build a habit around anything, and this is what this is asking you all to do. Now, the idea of praying, whether it's a busy day or a slow day, reminded me of there's the Zen proverb. If you don't have time to meditate for an hour every day, um, you should meditate for two hours. 
it also reminds me of uh, we, we had the quote in the uh, welcome loop today um, from uh, Dr. Emily Cady, um, doing is secondary to being. And in that section, what she's talking about is um, she's talking to folks just like you who are out here doing amazing things in the world and out here being a beneficial presence. And so you can sometimes feel like I'm too busy to meditate. I'm too busy to pray because I got all these people to serve. I got all these people to help. And she says, watch carefully. And you will find that there are some things, even in the active unselfish doing, that would be better left undone than you should neglect your regular meditation, or in this case, your regular prayer. So I paraphrase the, the Zen proverb, right? If you, if you don't have time to pray for uh, an hour a day, or in this case, 15 minutes a day, um, you should then add more time because it's that incredibly important, right? So. That's the, that's the what, right, in terms of what do we do? We agree to pray at a set time period. We pray in the morning. We don't make it indefinite. We agree we're gonna be, we're gonna be truth partners for the next 90 days. We're gonna be truth partners for the next 60 days, the next 30 days. As my grandmother loves to say, start out like you can hold out. So if you can't commit to 90, then commit to 30. Commit to 21 days even, right? Very important. So then the when. Um, when you're going to pray every morning for the 90 day time period, pray at the same time every morning, no excuses. Now, why? Because this develops persistence and consistency. This is that thing that I was talking about, that oftentimes by ourselves, um, uh, we let ourselves off the hook. Oftentimes by ourselves, we're not persistent or consistent. Uh, I, I encourage you to go to an, another sermon that was all about persistence, inspired by um, uh, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren in the, the Secret Sauce series. Um, nevertheless, she persisted. And in that sermon, I highlighted uh, Napoleon Hill, Chapter 9 in Think and Grow Rich, which is the chapter on persistence. I think it's also important to note here that um, as this is inspired by a book by August and Joel, um, not only were they prayer partners, but they were mastermind partners, and they applied the principles from Think and Grow Rich uh, very deliberately, very intentionally, to, and, and they wrote what was the first workbook um, for Think and Grow Rich. So one of the things that I love are, are the connections here, that um, what they're writing about and talking about, it's based on what they know to be true because they've proven the principles. What I'm teaching about in this moment is based on what I know to be true because I've practiced these principles deliberately and specifically. And so in chapter nine, it's interesting what Napoleon says, Napoleon Hill says and writes when he's talking about persistence. He says, surround yourself with a mastermind group and through the cooperative efforts of the members of this group, you can develop persistence. And so this is why a truth partnership is very powerful and profound, because maybe if you recognize and realize that you're not persistent in your life, that you're not consistent in your life, that you start something and it's good and you're excited about it and then you don't finish it um, or you read the whole book, but then you forget to apply anything that you read. It's an it's a beautiful thing to you need that. And so it's a beautiful thing to develop that in this way. By being consistent about praying each morning same time every morning no excuses this develops persistence and consistency which is what's required because remember we're not trying to convince god of anything we're trying to get ourselves to that thing we're becoming the answer to our prayers now that's the what that's the when and so the where where is anywhere that's private, right? In, in your home, it can be indoors, it can be outdoors. Just make sure that you're in a space that you won't be distracted. So where this also, a, a bit of practical advice, is make sure that you tell your family members that you're living with, your housemates, your roommates, your partner, your spouse, your lover, right? Hey, I pray every morning at 6.30 a.m. Um, and so I just want you to know that please don't disturb me, right? That way you won't be distracted. Um, and that's loving, right? That's loving to you and that's loving to them. Because if you don't tell them because you're um, in the spiritual closet, <laughs> one day they go bust in on you on your prayer and then you're going to be uh, uh, scared or embarrassed or, or maybe annoyed because you love this, this, this sacred time that you've created and now somebody is stepping in on it. So let them know, right? That's the easiest thing to do. All right. And then there's the how, right? There's some specific mechanics here that are very important, very important here. Now, when I share this how, this is, uh, um, again, inspired by the book 
Um, this can also be mixed up a bit. And in the book, if you get the book, you'll see there's some other um, suggestions of ways that you can mix this up. But this is the basic framework, right? And then there's a few things that can be changed here. But I, I really encourage you um, to, to align with this basic framework. So what does uh, um, morning truth partnership look like? Um, you're on the phone. You greet each other. Each per person briefly shares a prayer update. Name the challenge or obstacle that you're, you're praying through or praying about, or share a success um, as, as the prayer is being answered, okay? So then person A speaks their prayer, and person B reflects the prayer back using person A's name. Again, as I said, if you've been in the 4T Prosperity Program, this sounds familiar. Person B speaks their prayer. Person A reflects the prayer back using person B's name. Then... Uh, you can take turns alternating each day, uh, reading a short inspiring psalm or reading a quote or a short a story. I don't know how short that's, that story would have to be really short or maybe an affirmation. Observe one minute of sil silence or quiet contemplation. Say goodbye and hang up the phone. Now, um, one of the things, uh, the, the guidance from, from the text, you can speak from one to 15 minutes, no less, no more. It will be harder to maintain a daily commitment to praying if more time than that is required. So you hear what I shared, you hear the points that I shared, uh, but this can take no more than 15 minutes. So it's important, again, your truth partner, your partner in truth is not your venting partner. So here's, here's, here's an example, right? So if you were just recently laid off, right? And so now you wanna pray uh, for, for new employment, right? Um, you could tell the story about, yeah, you know, I was in the second group and I knew it was coming um, and I had tried to see if they would keep me and, um, you know, this is the, the, the third layoff I've experienced, right? You could tell that whole story, right? There's not enough time to do that, which is good, right? <laughs> because we're not here to talk about the problem, right? Prayer time is truth time. So you simply say, I was laid off and I'm looking for a new job. You actually don't even have to say I was laid off. You can just say I'm looking for a new job, right? That's the challenge. That's the obstacle. We don't tell the story of the problem. We just name it so that we can bring it to prayer, right? Now, the other thing you notice, it's like, well, wait a minute, PG. If this is only 15 minutes, how on earth can I pray my prayer? Um, because, you know, I've learned the five steps of affirmative prayer and I know I got to start with God is and and then I got to unify. I'm one with God and, and, and then I get to affirm what is now and I speak my truth and then we bring gratitude and then we release. Like, how can I get into all five steps of affirmative prayer um, in this little bit of time? How can both of us do that? So I want to share with you the three column prayer formula. Uh, this is something that we teach through four T's. This is something that you'll read and multiply your blessings. If you grab the book, um, August and Gold, August and Joel rather give the exact same three column formula. Right. And so how does this work? It's the simplest, most powerful and effective prayer. Column one is your name for God. Right. Decide what that is. It can be God, Mother, Father, God, uh, uh, <laughs> Jehovah. It could be divine love, divine presence, loving presence. Whatever your word for God is, that's the where you start. Your name for God. Column two, where is God? God is within or within me or within me now. Right. But God resides within you. That's very important because if if God is outside of you, no longer is this affirmative prayer. And then column three, what is God doing, being, or expressing in your life now? So an example of the three column prayer method, right? And again, if you get the book, there's other examples. Divine intelligence within me heals my knees, right? So divine intelligence is my name for God. Where is God? God is within me. And what is God doing? God is healing my knees. Perfect love within teaches me to love myself. What is my name for God? Perfect love. Where is God? Within. What is God doing? Teaching me to love myself. The prospering power of God in me, uh, in me prospers me now. What is my name for God? The prospering power of God. Where is God? In me. And what is God doing? Prospering me now. For another example, the all that is, is flow, uh, the all that is flowing through me guides me into new solutions for my business. 
What is my name for God? The all that is. Where is God? Flowing through me. Um, and what is it doing? It is guiding me into new solutions for my business. One, two, three. Very simple prayer. And so then what would happen if that with my prayer was divine intelligence within me heals my knees, then my prayer partner would say back to me, Greg, divine intelligence within you heals your knees. Notice the other thing is um, that I'm speaking in the present tense, right? Teaches me to love myself, prospers me now, guides me into new solutions, right? So I'm not asking God to do that. I'm affirming that God is doing that right now, right? I'm not hoping, I'm not saying, God, I will, uh, um, God, I will, uh, uh, um, I will, you know, stop drinking if you heal my knees, right? God, I'll stop cussing if you prosper me now, right? We're not saying any of those things. I'm saying God is prospering me now, right? God teaches me to love myself. God guides me, right? So it, it's an affirmative prayer that God is doing this now, right? And just for those of you um, who, who are, are, are sticklers, the five steps are rooted in this prayer, right? Step one, we have to acknowledge that God is. By saying and using my name for God, I'm recognizing that God is. The second step is we have to unify. Well, I said, where is God? Within me. So I'm unifying that I'm one with God. The next step is to uh, affirm what it is that's going on. And then the, the last two are gratitude and release. And so you, you can end, thank you, God, amen, ashe, and so it is. And so you've moved through the five steps, if you need the five steps, right, if that's important to you, but more importantly, the prayer is affirmative, it is short, it is quick, it is something that you can speak quickly, that can be reflected and affirmed back to you quickly, and y'all can be off the phone in 15 minutes. <laughs>